Hi, I hope you got a good score from the part one listening test you practiced at the end of the last lesson. Now let's turn to the writing paper again. Do you remember how long you have? How much time to do the writing paper in total? One hour and 20 minutes. And how many words do you need to write? Between 140 and 190. Well done if you remembered. We looked at part one of the writing back in video five. Remember, you have to write an essay. It's compulsory. Now let's go to part two. And in this part, you have a choice of three questions. These questions are selected from five different writing styles. A review, a report, an article, and two different styles of email or letter, a formal or an informal piece of writing. Now, in order to get good marks in the exam, you need to know the difference between formal writing and informal writing. Here's a mixture of expressions that you can use at the beginning or at the end of an email or letter. Which do you think are formal expressions and which do you think are informal? expressions. Pause the video and make a list of formal expressions and informal expressions. And also decide if you would see these expressions at the beginning or at the end of an email or letter. Write the expressions in your notebook or in a text document on your computer. Now, pause the video and do the task. This is what you should have. In the Cambridge exam, you need to write a particular way to get good marks. And this isn't necessarily how people write in real life. For example, I often finish formal emails with best wishes or warm regards or all the best, not with your sincerely. In fact, I can't remember the last time I wrote the words yours sincerely or yours faithfully. But you need to learn these expressions of formality in order to pass the exam. And after the exam, after you pass, you can write what you like. Now, we're going to look at formal writing in the next writing video when we practice the formal letter or email. But now look at the expression, sorry to be so slow getting back to you. This expression is informal because the I am is missing. In formal English, a similar sentence would be something like, I apologize for the delay in replying. And the expression, don't forget to write soon is informal because there's a contraction. Don't, do not. After the exam, it doesn't usually matter if you use contractions in formal English. I usually do. But for the exam, just remember, no contractions in formal writing. No contractions in formal writing. Let's look at some more differences between formal 
and informal English in letters and emails. I'm looking forward to is informal because of the contraction I'm, I am. There is a formal version, it's I look forward to with the present simple tense. I look forward to meeting you, for example. Don't forget to put the verb in the ing form after the preposition to. So you can write, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to having a holiday. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you, etc. To hang out means to spend time with someone. It's a phrasal verb and phrasal verbs are commonly used in informal English. In fact, there is often a more formal verb that can replace a phrasal verb. For example, to put off. To put off means to postpone. And get back, to get back can mean return. Exclamation marks can be used in informal writing. After informal expressions such as, I couldn't believe it, or you must be joking, or that's fantastic, or congratulations. You should write informal emails as if you're talking to a good friend. And this is made very clear in the instructions in the exam for an informal email. It will say something like, write an informal email to your friend or reply to your friend and say blah, blah, blah. So just imagine you're chatting to your friend in English and that is the style you should use for an informal email. Here's an example exam question. Pause the video, read the email and think about the questions in red at the bottom. Pause the video now. The first question, who do you have to write to? Well, it's your English friend Kevin. When you see your friend in the question, you should immediately know that you're writing an informal letter or email. Question two, why are you writing? You're writing to give information about popular tourist sites and to tell your friend if advanced booking is necessary. And question three, which words and expressions in the question make this email informal? One example is, I'm really looking forward to. The formal version is, I look forward to plus ing. I'd really like is another informal expression. I would like very much, or I would be extremely interested to see, would be a formal version. And thanks is informal because thank you in advance, or I look forward to receiving your reply, would be a more formal way to finish an email. Let's look at an example answer to this question. In this example answer, Pete is replying to Kevin. And as you can see, there's a mixture of formal and informal English in the email. Pause the video, read the example answer quickly, then go back to the beginning and choose the best words or phrases for an informal email. Now pause the video. Here is the informal language you should have chosen. Did you get them all? 
Number four is quite interesting. It's inverted for emphasis. A more common way to say this is, I like beer and wine tasting the most. But for emphasis, we can change the order of the words and say, the thing I like most is, etc. More examples of this inversion are, the song I like best is, or the food I eat a lot of is, or the sport I love to play is, etc. Also notice the conditional sentence. If you like, I could send you concert dates. If you like, present simple, I could, conditional, if you want, we could, if you're here in May, we could go to the festival. Using a selection of varied and different grammatical forms like conditional sentences will get you good marks in the writing test. The expression at the end of the email, let me know what you think, is often used to ask for a reply. It's a good expression to remember, so write it down in your notebook. Add that expression to your notes. In fact, Make a note of any expressions you like in this example and use them when you write an informal email. Here's another exam question. Pause the video and read the question. Who are you writing to? Dave. You're writing to Dave. He's your friend, so it's another informal email. Why is Dave writing to you? He's inviting you to spend Christmas with him and his family. So Dave's email is an email of invitation. You should always think why you are writing. Sometimes you may be asked to give advice to a friend or give recommendations or information. So always think what is the purpose of the email. The email also says, let me know what you think. Well, Maybe you have plans for Christmas and you have to refuse the invitation. In that case, you'll thank David, say no, and say why you can't accept his invitation. But let's look at an example answer that accepts Dave's invitation. Sophia has replied to Dave and accepted his invitation. She's already bought a ticket. She hasn't wasted any time, has she? But she has made 15 mistakes in her email. Can you find her mistakes? Pause the video, correct Sophia's mistakes, and write the email again in your notebook or in a text document on your computer. If you want to print this email, you'll find it in the support file. The name of the PDF document is Example Question, Dave and Sophia. Now, pause the video and correct the mistakes in Sophia's email. Here are some suggestions for improving the email. It's not always a good idea to translate directly from your language to English. 
Spend is a better collocation here than pass, for example. And boring is an active adjective. Bored, ed, is a passive adjective. If the film is boring, you are bored by the film. If the lesson is interesting, then you are interested. Funny and fun are sometimes confused. You laugh at a funny joke or a funny film. A person or a situation can be funny. On the other hand, we can have fun when we go out with friends, when we play a game, etc. For example, I had a lot of fun hanging out with you yesterday. We say have a good time, not pass a good time. To have a good time is a common collocation. And speaking of collocations, we have a bath in the bathroom, not in the sea. We have a swim, or we go for a swim, or we go in the sea. And be careful how you use too and enough. The coffee is too cold. It's not hot enough. The jacket is too expensive. It's not cheap enough. Prepositions are tricky, aren't they? We say on a donkey, on a horse, on a bike, on a motorbike, on a camel, etc. Never up. That's a crime in some countries. And put adverbial expressions like very much and a lot at the end of the clause. So we say, I like swimming very much. I like football a lot. I like camping very much. I like photography a lot, etc. News has an S at the end, but it's an uncountable noun. It looks plural, but it's not. We say some news or a piece of news. I've got some really good news for you. To fly is a verb and the noun is flight. I'm flying to Paris tomorrow. How was your flight? I'm looking forward to plus gerund or an ing verb. For example, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to going to your party. I'm really looking forward to having lunch with you. I'm looking forward to celebrating your anniversary, etc. The phrasal verb to pick someone up means to collect them in a car and take them somewhere. I'll pick you up at the airport. The opposite is to drop someone off, which means to leave them somewhere. For example, I'll pick you up at your hotel and drop you off at the station. Or, can you drop me off at the restaurant tonight? You can also see these suggested corrections in the PDF document called Example Question Dave and Sophia Answers, which you'll find in the support material. So, what do you think? Is this a good answer to the exam question? Will it get a good mark in the exam now that it's been corrected, do you think? Do you remember the four criteria that the examiner will apply? We spoke about this in lesson five, about the essay. One was content, communicative achievement, organization, and language. Did Sophia answer the question? Yes. She accepted the invitation. She thanked Dave for the invitation. She gave Dave details of when she's arriving and she asked him to pick her up at the airport. So, good marks for content. Is the email written in the correct style?
Is it informal? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there are some contractions as well. I'll, I'm, there, they are, there, I'd, I would, etc. And there are some informal expressions. I hope that's okay. Anyway, I'm looking forward to it so much, etc. And what about organisation? Is the email well organised? Yes, there are clear, well organised paragraphs. And what about the language in the email? Are there many grammar or vocabulary mistakes? No. Well, there were at first, but not now that we've corrected them. Is there a wide variety of vocabulary and grammar that is appropriate for the B2 level? Yes. Exciting city. I'm looking forward to it. Have a swim in the sea. Your kind invitation. I have some good news. My flight is open, etc. And has Sophia written between 140 and 190 words? Yes, she has. There are 159 words in Sophia's answer. So, the $50,000 question, would this writing pass in the exam? Yes, it would. So, well done, Sophia. In fact, this would probably pass even with a few of the mistakes that we corrected earlier, but not all 15. You can make some mistakes, but try to find and correct as many of your mistakes as possible in those five or 10 minutes you're going to save at the end for searching for mistakes. Now it's time for you to practice. If you want feedback on your writing, you can use the Cambridge Write and Improve website. It's free and there are informal letter or email questions for you to answer on that web page. Remember that the feedback you get on your writing will be from an AI algorithm, not a real teacher. But it's a free service and I think it will be useful. Now let's see what you remember about how to write an informal letter or email. Take the quiz for this lesson and check your answers when you've finished. In the support material, you'll find a list of informal expressions that you can use when you write an informal email or letter. And there's also a gap fill exercise for you to practice your informal expressions. There's also a self-assessment form that you can use to assess your writing for the Cambridge criteria. This PDF is called B2 First Writing Self-Assessment. In the next lesson, we'll look at part three of the reading and use of English test, word formation. What is word formation? What's the best way to do word formation questions? And how can you prepare for this part of the exam? You'll find out in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.